All right, everyone, Tuesday's video as we um, gradually progress through the week and edge towards the big derby on Sunday. Um, it certainly feels like the calm before the storm at the moment, and I say that because um, there isn't a huge amount actually going on right now. Having said that, um, there are a couple of stories I just want to maybe touch on on this video. They're both to do with the weekend's fixture, unsurprisingly. You know, we know how big a fixture it's going to be. It's going to be um, a potentially season-defining match. I'm always very wary of saying that kind of thing because what happens when the, the next derby comes up and it's a couple of games from the end of the season and it genuinely is going to define what way the title goes. But... It's very hard, you know, at this stage not to look at Sunday's game as, as being like the, perhaps the first absolutely major defining moment in this title race. I know there's been dropped points here and there, but in terms of the teams going head to head on Sunday and, and kind of knowing whoever comes out on top, um, if there is a winner, it is going to be decent sized favourites to go on and, and win the league. That's the kind of knife edge things are on at the moment. Um, if it's a draw, you know, we, we kind of advance on at that stage. Um, yeah, the first thing I want to talk about is the team we're potentially going to be looking at. As I say, I know we're a few days out from the game, but I think we have a pretty good idea of the Celtic team that's going to play. In fact, spoiler alert, and we'll touch on this in a few minutes, I'm actually pretty sure I know the full 11 that are going to start at Ibrox. The big um, question we have at the moment is what is Callum McGregor's situation and the club have been quite tight-lipped about um, his fitness, he hasn't featured since I think the 7-1 victory over Dundee a, a couple of months ago now maybe not quite as long, maybe about six weeks ago. He scored in that game, went off at half time and we haven't seen him um, play again since then in the time he's been out you know we've had uh, Rio Hatati come back into the fold Cameron Carter Vickers uh, we even had um, Mike Narofsky making the match day squad rather surprisingly on Sunday it's really only McGregor and Lewis Palma who I think are injured at the moment Palma I don't think is going to um, you know, make the derby at the weekend and even if he was fit he wouldn't be starting that match at the moment so the big question and the big um, thing on you know people's minds at the moment is will Callum McGregor make the match we have some quotes to, to go off we, we mentioned yesterday that John Kennedy was the one who was doing the, the media post-match um, after the Livingston game on Sunday and he spoke positively about the impact that he thinks Cal McGregor could have in this Celtic squad when he returns. He also actually interestingly mentioned three leaders who really stand up when McGregor is not around. And those three players were Joe Hart, Cameron Carter Vickers and Alistair Johnson. Maybe the first two certainly wouldn't be a surprise, but and I'm not saying that Alistair Johnson being a leader is a surprise either but I just thought that was a kind of interesting addition from, from John Kennedy naming those three players in terms of um, McGregor's actual fitness uh, situation he um, did speak about that a little bit at the end of his answer and to be fair didn't give a, a hell of a lot away Kennedy said as the manager has obviously said hopefully he will be back in training in the middle of the week We'll get him through that and then the manager will decide later in the week whether or not he's fit to play. Uh, I don't believe McGregor has been back in training yet, certainly in the kind of footage and the photos we saw from late last week. He hadn't been, but he's obviously going to be back maybe today. Uh, Brendan Rogers actually was asked about McGregor as well uh, on Friday ahead of the Livingston game and he described um, his him as having a uh, quote a very good chance of making that derby so that's um probably the best quote we've got so far to give us an indication of what's going on and i just think personally um they're gearing callum mcgregor up for this fixture i think he's going to come in and start the game at ibrooks and i think it's going to give a, a huge boost to the entire squad now while mcgregor has been out tomoki awata's kind of come in and and taking that position on and has done really well and I thought he had another really good game especially in the second half against Livingston however he's not Callum McGregor and you know when you look at McGregor who hasn't had an amazing season 
this year. Two of his better performances, you know, in the in the campaign have been in the derby matches. You know, especially at Ibrooks, he for me was was probably the standout player that day. And I think, you know, if it's a choice between Cal McGregor or Tomoki Awati, you put McGregor in. And it would also potentially allow us to see the midfield trio of McGregor, Hitati and O'Reilly together at Ibrooks. And I really do think that would make us all feel pretty good about our chances. I mean, those three, the best three midfielders in Scotland, I don't think you'd get many people actually arguing with that and saying there are, are better options than you know, Hitati and O'Reilly, who are clearly both 20 million plus players and will be when they leave the club. And Callum McGregor, who's just been, you know, the most consistent, um, best captain in Scottish football for a number of years now. So that midfield start at Ibrox would, you know, obviously be be huge for us. I was actually looking back to see the last time McGregor, Hitati and O'Reilly have started a game together. And it was actually our 2-2 draw uh, with Atletico Madrid in the Champions League back in October. They started that match together. Hitati only lasted seven minutes before going off injured. They started the, the previous match to that as well together. That was our 4-1 win at Tynecastle. So good things seem to happen when those three play together. They were kind of the main three from the Ange Postacoglu era as well. I know we had other guys like... Uh, Aaron Moy and Iwata and David Turnbull mucking in from time to time but those were the three who really got us going and I just think if those three are in the starting lineup on Sunday we're all going to feel pretty good about our chances as I say you know I reckon I have a pretty good idea of the team we'll, we'll, we'll see on Sunday and a, there might be a, a curveball thrown in by Brendan Rodgers we don't know fully you know what the situation is with McGregor we might not find out until the team's announced on Sunday morning but I think this is a team that will start at Ibrox and you can you know let me know what you think of that you would feel pretty good about that lineup, wouldn't you I mean maybe there's a worry on the the left side of our defence but other than that, you know, it's as strong as we could be. And I don't know, a team like this seemed a, a bit of a long shot a few weeks ago when there was big question marks over Hitati and Carter Vickers and, and McGregor. And obviously there is still a question mark over McGregor. But suddenly I think that's a team that's capable of going to Ibrox and winning. Whether they do or not is obviously the, the big question that we, we'd have to wait and find out. But, you know, that's a, a pretty, you know, decent Celtic side for me. So yeah, that's really where we're at. Um, for all of the chat about McGregor and, and the quotes I read out there, we still don't know for sure, but I just get the impression that he's been geared up for this game. And we know, you know, we know about Callum McGregor and we know that even if he's not 100%, he's going to put himself out there at Ibrox and probably put in a really good performance. He's done it in the past in this very fixture. And it would just be a huge boost to, to everyone, the support, um, you know, obviously we're not going to have fans in the stadium, but you know, even for the players um, to see McGregor in that starting lineup on Sunday, our leader, you know, would be huge. So I think it's it's massive that he's fit, um, and I think he will be. If he's not, you know, Tomoki Awata, I think has shown in, in recent weeks that he's up for that challenge as well. So suddenly we have options in in various positions, um, but it's all just about turning up on on Sunday and uh, and doing the business really. Another unknown at the moment with regards to Sunday's derby is the, the referee. Now, I would expect that to be announced probably today. That's Tuesday. They normally do it maybe on Monday, but just with it being a bank holiday, um, I'm guessing that will be today. I doubt it would be much later than that. And, um, yeah, we're kind of questioning who the referee will be. It won't be John Beaton, will it? I know I'll have like loads of you thinking, that's ah, the SFA, Hamish, you know, they do this with time to time. You know, what are they like, etc. I would be surprised if it's John Beaton, given what's gone on recently um, and the, the controversy that surrounded him. Um, and to be honest, has surrounded him with regards to Celtic matches in recent years. But obviously it's only, you know, gone up in, in recent weeks with that, you know, game at Tynecastle when he was on VAR. It surely won't be John Beaton. Surely. Uh, Willie Collum, probably for the, the same reasons on their side, they seem to have a big problem with Willie Collum for some reason. Um, 
I think they've actually asked for Willie Collum not to referee their matches. I believe he did a Scottish Cup tie recently uh, home to Air United, Scott Brown's Air United. Very different, though, to a derby. I would doubt it would be Willie Collum for the game. The uh, the referees in the previous derbies this season have been uh, Don Robertson for the first one at Ibrooks and Nick Walsh for the one at New Year at Celtic Park. So um, they'll probably be out of the reckoning as well. I'm not 100% sure if that's how they do things, but you don't often seem to get you know the same referee refing multiple league derbies in a single season. So that really only leaves us with like David Dickinson or, or Kevin Clancy, potentially. I know there's a couple of other names like Alan Muir, Stephen McLean, but just looking at the, the ones who have refed the most Premiership matches this season, uh, and in order they are beaten you know, Walsh, and then it's actually David Dickinson who's third there. He seems to be someone they're really rating and trying to push up. Um, I don't think he's ever done a derby before, so would they throw him into one of this magnitude for your first derby? They seem to usually want you in, and you're, you know, the first derby of the season or maybe a dead rubber at the end of the campaign can it ease you in gently. So I think it'd be a rogue shout to give him, you know, a, a match of this stature and this importance. Kevin Clancy, to me, seems like the, the obvious shout here. He's refed some big games already this season. Some of our you know games against the likes of Hearts and Aberdeen. He did the Edinburgh Derby. He's had Rangers games as well. I, um, based on nothing at all, think it might be Kevin Clancy for Sunday. But to be honest, nothing would really surprise me with the SFA. As I say, um, that's just a guess at this stage. And I think it will be announced today. And I'm sure everyone will, you know, take the decision in good faith and there'll be no blowback or, or anything like that. Um, but yeah, everything's just heightened at the moment. It's just such a big game and there's just so much going on, so much controversy, uh, you know, in Scottish football, particularly between Celtic and Rangers and, the, you know, the officials and VAR and all of that stuff at the moment that every decision is, is really, really heightened. And I think that's another um, thing that's going to get people talking. As I say, that's really all there is to do at the moment is to talk about this game and we've got a number of videos to do it between now and, you know, the match actually kicking off. There isn't a, you know, huge amount of other stuff happening at the moment. I'd expect that to pick up as the, the week goes on. Obviously, we'll have, you know, press conferences and stuff like that to get our teeth into as well. But yeah, we'll just keep the build up going on the channel, as I say, back tomorrow uh, when hopefully there'll be um, a bit more stuff to get our teeth into.